Hello everyone. Okay, yeah, we are recording. Hello everyone, this is Kira Show here. This is going to be part eight or nine, I believe. When we last left off, Deku and Momo actually did beat all night, but afterward they Deku collapsed because of exhaustion and Momo used Momo ran out of stamina and actually collapsed because because she overused her quirk. So yeah. Anyways, let's cut to the let's cut to the recovery girls' room and everyone comes in and checks on these two. Momo's there on a Hmm. Momo's laying in a hospital bed and she's drinking a protein shake. And meanwhile, Deku's there, just passed out. Actually, Recover Girl would explain that whatever All Might, whatever the fight happened between these two, the fight between these two, because since Deku was holding off All Might and caught in most of the explosions Momo did. The damage to his body is greater than anything she's seen. He she he looks like All Might after just fighting off twenty. He looks like All Might after fighting the Nomu. And Recover Girl would do X-rays on Deku and tell everyone that Deku that she thought Deku only broke. His hand and one of his legs. But no, he actually cracked half the bones in his body. And what I mean by that is, after a while, Deku would wake up. Recover Girl would have healed him, but that would have only fixed some of them. She would explain to Deku that when fight, whenever he was fighting All Might, he actually broke. He broke a couple parts of his kneecap and the bone in his hand. Deku would explain that he already knew this, but she would also tell him no, he doesn't really know this. But he also cracked a lot of his bones when fighting him. And Deku would have asked how many, and she would have said half the ones in your rib cage, back. Skull and arms. Everyone would have heard this and thought Deku was insane since he never really fi he never noticed. So yeah. Uh, let's see. I need to the stain arc. That was the villains. Villains. That was the teachers or students. So this one should be. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> This one is the Pussycats training arc. Pussycats. The forest training arc. Ah, there goes my nose again. Anyway. They're on the bus. They're all talking. Deku and Momo are actually officially a couple, so they're sitting together, holding hands, doing whatever a couple would be doing on a bus. They're kind of... They're really close together and actually talking. And people, some people are looking at them, some people are. Froppy would ask Deku that question. One, his quirk is very strong, kind of like All Might's. Deku would explain yes, but he doesn't think All Might can't see. Can he? He would explain that his quirk might be kind of like All Might's, but he sees like a bat, and everything, his senses are entirely increased. If anything, his quirk might be better than All Might's. 
people are kind of reluctant to agree with him, but he would state how he would kind of talk about how it's hard kind of not to agree with him since him and Momo at essentially both of them together beat him. People would kind of agree with them and they would stop at the they'd stop at that one cliff edge. Why am I dog barking? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but dogs are barking in the background. So yeah. After that, they are they stop at the cliff edge and ah, hang on. Okay, I just cleared my throat and my dogs have stopped barking, so that's good. Okay, I thought they were about to start up again. Anyway, they would have stopped at the fort. They would have stopped by the cliff. The pussy catch would have been introduced. They kind of would have asked why one of their students is wearing goggles that they can't see his eyes. Deku would explain that. He's blind. And hang on, I gotta do this again. I'm really sorry, guys, but that is annoying. I can barely talk with that stuff. I have to keep hawking Yugi's, it feels like, because I keep getting stuff caught in my throat. Anyway. Oh. <sighs> anyway. After Deku would explain this. He would explain that, oh, his quirk is kind of like, um, he would say the name of the girl who can, like, see things all around them. He would say that his quirk's kind of like that, and that he can actually see the, he can actually hear and see the monsters down there. She would kind of just, like, the girl who made the monsters would kind of, like, freeze up for a second, and they could then say, so, might as well. So he'd take a running, he'd take a running start and actually jump off the mountain and after that he would begin fighting a lot of the monsters and people are just watching this so Momo would just Momo would create her rocket boots she actually would save a lot of the nanites she creates but she does lose a lot of them in fights so she does have to create more so she would create her boots just her boots and her gauntlets, because she's trying to save her nanites. And actually, she would create the visor that she uses. Like I said, the goggles. And yeah, she would fall, go into going against them. And she would create her power source on her back. And hide it under some of the nanites. Essentially, these are like giant, probably like hand sized, hand grenade sized batteries. Like eight or nine of them, ten of them, like all around her back. Covered by a layer of nanites that actually do. The Covered by a layer of nanites and actually being powering the suit for a while. Because she found a way to actually. She found a way to actually use. She found a different power source this time, because she's ex she was experimenting with power sources before, but now she actually found one that might sustain her suit for about an hour. And that's if she only uses the gloves and the boots. So she would do that. She'd come fighting in. Everyone would just hear the carnage of missiles being fired, explosions, and actually hearing, seeing quite a lot of trees fall over. Even then, Deku would run back out. Actually, Momo and Deku would then come back out whenever everyone starts falling. Momo would have... Oh. Momo would have been there, and, yeah. Okay. Mm. That would happen. Deck would meet up with everyone, telling them, everyone, to stay behind him. This might be a bit reckless. And he would hold out his left palm, 
out in front of him, and he would bring his right palm up, and he would smack them together, as if you're giving a round of applause. He would have he would have his hand flat, and he would smack his other hand as hard as he can. Probably about seventy percent of one for all cutting. He would actually would have created a shockwave cutting down most of the trees in front of him, along with most of the creatures in front of him. So after that, Deku would be running through and actually climbing and swinging around some of these broken trees because some are still standing. And the Pussycats and Ozawa are still on the cliff and everyone's asking if that's the kid that if that kid is even human. Because that's something they thought only All Might could do. He would say that, oh, actually, that kid beat All Might in a fight. Along with uh, the girl that was flying. People would ask, oh, what kind of quirk does she have? A nanobot quirk or a nanite quirk? He would say, no, she has a creation quirk. They would be surprised to hear that. Because creation quirks aren't very good in battle. C is obviously good combat. Now then. Yeah. <sighs> now then. They would get there. Deku, when he gets there, him and Momo would have sat down and started talking. And he actually would have... Deku would have, like, put his batons back together, forming his cane again. And actually would have sat down with it. And Koda, whenever he sees Deku with his cane, because he's actually not in his hero outfit, Koda would just think that that's weird since he just saw him come running out of the forest with batons. Deku would then t say that, oh, he can smell co he can smell you, and it's, no you it's not really going to help trying to hide, so just come over and talk to him. Koda would be kind of surprised to hear this, and he would come over and say, what's your deal? You can't see, but you can smell me? Deku would state that his quirk is, like, echo. He can see like a bat, and he can also smell and hear things from far away. And then he would, uh, oh, come on. Don't. Oh. Okay, God. He would explain that even though he cannot see throughout his eyes, he can see everything around him. Koto would actually be kind of saddened for Deku because he would start asking questions like typical, qu typical questions a kid would probably ask someone deep lines like, have you ever seen what color this is or what color that is? Deku would just tell him no and he's actually never seen those colors. But he would say that he's heard red be described as warm and violet and cold and blue being described as cold and soothing. And Koda would ask him if he knows what the color black looks like. Deku would say that he actually, that is exactly what he sees whenever he looks around. Black is the absence of all color. So that is the only color he knows. And if you're wondering why I'm putting, including this part in, that's going to make more sense later. So, Koda would actually be having a good time talking with Deku. And he would ask him, how can he be a hero like that? Deku would explain that his quirk, the, all the time he's ever been training, he only found out that his quirk enhanced, enhanced his senses, even though he can't see. But lately, he's found out. But in the last year, whatever he, in the last year, he has discovered that his quirk can enhance his physical body just differently. He essentially has to let it flow throughout his entire body and focus on it. 
Koda would actually really, really like Deku because he's not trying to be a hero for the fame. He's trying to do it to help people. So, yeah. Cut to everyone getting there, and Deku and Koda are still talking, and Momo is actually still there. She would explain that Deku actually saved her from a monster the year prior, and her and him have been good friends since then, or actually a couple. So, Koda would appreciate that Deku's trying to become a hero to help people, because he doesn't like those flashy heroes. And now, let's uh, skip to the training. For a lot of the training they do, Momo would create... Oh, crap, actually. Yeah, hang on. Momo would create, like, radio antennas and a bunch of stuff like that, so... Her whole idea for training is essentially almost like in canon, but this time she's re creating, like, police response stuff, different types of TV, some types of radio, stuff like that. And these are all being plugged in and surround, surrounding Deku. And Deku is essentially doing as many exercises as he can while staying... Not that. Deku, he is essentially told that... Not told, but... He is essentially locked in this room full of TVs and radios. But it's not just that. As he's in here, he's actually balancing himself on a pen with one finger. And whenever Deku does start doing this, because he was just holding it for as long as he can, and people would just look at him thinking he's crazy, but that's got to be, probably can't hold that for very long. The Pussycats and Aizawa would actually be seeing Deku do this. And I think it's crazy. So after a while, probably an hour or so, Deku would get off the he'd get off his pen and actually jump out of the area he's in. And he'd say that it's time for him and Momo to actually spar or fight seriously. Now everyone when they do hear this, they're actually really interested to see what happens. So Aizawa would say that they should all take a break. All these two fight. Now, a lot of the girls are cheering on Momo, and a lot of the guys are actually cheering on Deku. Bakugo still doesn't care, so he would just do his thing. Ida kind of wants both of them to dr have a draw, because they essentially were both there to help save him from the hero killer. Now, where to begin? Momo would create a bunch of sonic sound blasters and stuff like that, like sound grenades, just a bunch of stuff to get Deku's attention and try and draw him away. And she would throw these all around Deku while she's in the air and drop them. This would confuse Deku, and people are realizing that. She knows a weakness to his quirk that not a lot of them do. But as soon as Deku hears her take a, a breath in, he would charge directly at her by launching into the air. And as soon as this does happen, she would try and move. she try and dodge Deku, but he would get right up in front of her and pull her back down to the ground. And they would begin fighting like they did during the sports festival, but her suit is actually a bit more advanced, and Deku is a lot stronger. And they just keep going back and forth with this, and Momo's actually trying to shoot Deku with a lot of explosives and stuff like that. They're questioning if Deku actually knows he's that durable. A lot of people are saying no, but some want to say yes. And they're going back and forth, blow for blow, fist for fist, to the point where Deku actually, he powers down one for all, 
and actually tells her to fight him with the with what he's been teaching her. He wants to see how far she's come. So she would receive the nanites, and they're both actually a bit bloodied and bruised. Deku's eye, one of Deku's eyes are actually bloodshot red. Because he took off his goggles. And everyone's looking at his eyes, seeing that this is the first time they've probably seen them have actual color in them, besides the sports festival. Now, they would begin fighting with martial arts. Deku and Momo are actually quite on an even playing field, but Momo is... Momo is a bit behind on Deku, but she's catching up slowly but surely. And they're actually fighting on equal playing grounds. Well, on equal plane, because she was actually learning a new martial art. No, actually, let's not do that. She actually has mastered some of the martial, a lot of the martial arts Deku has been teaching her. Now, one thing I realized I should have probably done with this series would have been cool, but I now realize I should not have done, or I'm glad I did not do is uh, Bakugo likes guns. Let's just keep it at that. Also, Frank Castle is the Punisher. He has guns. I'm really glad I did not make Bakugo corkless and make him like the Punisher with guns. Because that would have been very hard to explain. Now, they're still fighting, and they actually do... They're going for a lot of nerve clusters and stuff like that fighting. They actually do take each other down. And they're probably fighting like this for 10 to 15 minutes. They're going very fast, and... It's nearly hypnotic to some people because of what is going on. And, yeah. After this, some people would actually say that they don't. Aizawa would essentially call the match probably after 30 minutes. So they were fighting for a good hour. And both of them actually a little winded, stating that they haven't trained like this since the, before the entrance exam. People would think they're insane. Okay, and the next part I will be going over. Oh wow, yeah. And the next part I will be going over the villain attack of the forest and the awful one for it. Ugh. Now then, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go get this stuff out of my nose, and I hope you guys all have a good day, cause I can barely breathe.